This presentation explains serial connections to a Softman controller and it is aimed specifically at the, at the CR391, although the principles remain the same to any controller. Before we continue, let's do some education on RS485. RS485 is half duplex. It means only one can talk at a time. Everybody listens, one talk. And yes, you form a multi-drop LAN. So multiple units, controllers, devices on an RS485 LAN. It is differential. So the data and not data, there's a difference of zero volts or five volts. And these two flip around. And we look at the difference between the two. So if there's noise, both move up and down. And we're only looking at the at the difference between these. And yes, we do use a screen cable. And because it's differential, we can go 2,000 meters off cable. So you need two, tw two pairs, two twisted pairs. As I said, the data not data are twisted together. So if there's noise, they both move together, hence twisted pair. The other pair we use for ground. This is to get the potential of all these devices at the same. Otherwise, my 5 volts is not the same as your 5 volts, and we could damage something on the board. Hence, we send ground together to get them all at the same reference. It's multi-drop. That means no T's. We go from one node to another node to another node. No T's. There are only two cable ends. So you go from node W to X and from X to Y and only two ends to this cable. Screen. We must screen this cable to keep noise out, but only screen at one side. There might be that earth is not the same at, at two points and we don't want current flowing because there's a there's a potential in earth. So do not loop through. Here I've now shown we earth at node W, we earth at node X and node Y, but not at node Z also. So each of those segments, one earth, so not looped through. The RS-485, data not data, are normally floating. So everybody listens and only one transmits at a time. So we need to separate, we need to pull these cables up and down. The data up to five volts and not data down. Otherwise, they would float and they might then pass across one another and then we are going to see data which is which is incorrect. Now, on most PC boards, there are links to pull up and pull down. And yes, you only need, you must only do this at one point. Otherwise, the load is too high and preferably in the middle of the cable. Generally, one does this at the master. The master doesn't have to be at the middle. It could be sitting anywhere. So we will show the links shortly. The two ends of the cable must be terminated by the characteristic impedance of the cable. The cable that normally is used is 120 ohms, so you need to stick 120 ohms between data and not data and screw them into the terminal so that if you do remove the PC board that the, the, the resistor is still in, in the connector itself. As I said, all nodes listen. They're all in receive mode, or only one transmits at a time. So it's pulled. The master says, hey, number one, have you got data? Number one says, no, I don't, or yes, data. Number two, if you've got something to say, so the master pulls and the nodes answer. So that was RS-485. So what is RS-232? This is between two units, two units only, as opposed to RS-485, could have, could have multiple units on the same cable. RS-232 is full duplex between two units. And the voltage levels are plus and minus 12 volts, TX to ground, RX to ground. And maximum length is only three meters. So it's between controller and a device, a device like a scanner, a printer, a reader, a modem, etc. So TX to RX and RX from TX. TX normally sits at minus 12. That's when there's no data. So it's the data is high. Or it goes up to 12 volts when there's, a, when there's a zero. RX floats. So that's an input. There is no voltage on it. 
So here you can easily check your if your cable is correct. Measure between the TX and ground, you should be getting minus 12 normally. On the RX line, you're not going to measure anything. And yes, if you do connect them up the wrong way around, nothing's going to break. Obviously, you're not going to have communication. There are optional handshake signals, like a request to send, clear to send. We do not use this. Okay, so now we know RS485, RS232. Let's see what we have available on CR391. The CR391 has five serial ports. It can have five serial ports. And we've named them A to E, just for document purposes. It's one to five, but let's call them A to E. And on the board, there are 12 serial interface options. RS485 is an interface. RS232 is an interface. So selections of those five to those 12 are via three identical links. And as you can see on the, on the top right there, I have the SCOM A. Those two can have a link to an adjacent pin. So this is how it works. There are four RS485 options on this board. So there they are on those matrices. There are two, two, three, twos. And then there are Wi-Fi, GSM, and Zigbee options, and two modules. You can take two piggyback modules. So don't worry about this. This is advanced stuff. Just know there are interfaces available on our board. So how is the CR391 shipped as default? Default COM A is linked through to the RS485 handheld connector, and the default is FLAN master, so ready to be a handheld. COM B is RS485 LAN, so that's on the LAN connector, and LAN slave. So if you were a master, you would have to come and change this to LAN master. C is linked through to RS2321, and the default is test, so to do tests, built-in byte, things like that. COMD is linked through to RS4851. There is no type default setting there. The same goes for E. It is linked through to TTL, the TTL connector, as used by the medium, built on the medium board, and no interface is set. Let us change something from the default. The default is shown here. Let's say we need two serial RS232 readers, for example, scanners reading barcodes. ComC is already connected to RS2321, so we need another one. The only other RS232 on the board is RS2322, so that could either link to ComA, which already is handheld, linked to handheld, or it could go to B, that already is linked to LAN, slave LAN, or it could go to D, COMD. Now that's already linked to RS4851. So let's say we're going to move it to COMD. So that's where we want COMD to RS2322. That means we have to remove this link, the link D to RS4851. We need to remove that link and we're going to insert a new link between COMD and RS2322. So that's where it is now. So we're going to link those two readers to COMC, which is coming out at RS2321, and COMD, which comes out at RS2322. What are the settings on the PC, the, the software 3 settings? Reader 1, let's say that's going to be COMC. So we need to then address that. COMC is Number three, COM C is three. The node and the port is irrelevant. It's, there's only one device on this port, on this COM port. And reader two will then be, because it's D, is COM four. Node and port are irrelevant. We need additional setting on for the controller to tell it to link those readers those serial ports to readers. So the serial ports, I've gone to that controller, that appropriate controller. So COM3 and 4, that's that's COM C and D. I'm, that's, I'm linking that now to reader 1 and reader 2. That's the reader reference. So I'm saying controller 1, 
your serial port 3 is type reader and there's the board rate and the bit type which obviously must match the setting of the scanner and that is reader 1. COM4 serial 4 is also type reader again board rates and bit types and parities matching and that is reader reference 2 so that becomes reader 2 and that's as simple as it is.